do you want to train state-of-the-art models, but you're stuck on loading the actual data? Luckily, that's exactly what we're going to learn in this video right after that beautiful intro. All right, guys, so before we get into the exact structure of the data set that we're working with today, I believe that the fundamentals we will learn uh, will extend to any kind of text data set that you're working with, either if it's a translation data set, a sentiment data set, question answering, really anything when dealing with text. So I've made previous videos on Torch Text, which I believe is a great library that simplifies a lot of stuff for us, but in some cases, you need to be able to create the custom data set yourself. And in this video, we're working with a caption data set, where, which is a great example where it's difficult to use Torch text. So a caption data set is when we have images and we have corresponding captions that describe what we see in the image. Now, if you're completely new to uh, loading data using custom data sets in PyTorch, I recommend that you start up with another video I've done to learn more about the general structure of the data loading process. And then you can come back to this video, which is a bit more of an advanced one. Let me now show you how the data is set up. So we're specifically using the Flickr 8K data set and uh, it's a caption data set. And all we have in it is a, a folder with all of the images. And then we have a captions file that sort of uh, says we have an image and then we have a caption. So this is the image uh, file, uh, sort of the ID of the image file. And then we have the corresponding caption to that image. And for each image, we have five different captions so that you can sort of uh, say what's in the image in different variants. Um, but yeah, so that's the data, um, how it's structured. So let's start with being super clear of the goal of this video and sort of where we want to be at the end of the video. Uh, so the overall goal that we want to do is uh, we want to convert text into numerical values, right? It, we're not gonna implement a model in this video, but if we would have some model, we can't just send in text. We need to convert the text into some numerical values and that can be sent in to our model. So what we need to do first for that is we need a vocabulary, right? Um, uh, so that we can map uh, each word to a index, right? And then second thing we, we need to do, uh, we need to set up a PyTorch data set to load the data, all right? And in that data loading process, we're gonna utilize a vocabulary so that we can convert the, the, uh, the, the string into um, an actual numerical, uh, actual numerical values. This is gonna become clear uh, when we code it, but just sort of the overall, uh, overarching goal of the video. So then we're gonna lastly set up padding of every batch. So all examples uh, should be sort of uh, of same sequence length, right? When we send it into some, let's say LSTM, they all need to be same sequence length in the batch. Uh, so for all examples. And we want to set up the data loader. Right? So at the end of the video, we'll have a data loader so that we can just do sort of for image comma caption in data loader and then set up the loop so that that would be then sent into the model. All right, so uh, let me now just uh, copy in the imports that we're gonna use. So we're gonna use uh, OS for uh, loading the file paths. We're gonna use pandas for lookup in the annotation file. We're gonna use spacey uh, and we're gonna use it for uh, tokenization. So essentially the caption is a string. We want to split the string. Uh, so let's say a very simple tokenization could be that we split for each uh, space so that we sort of get each word. Uh, but spacey has some more advanced tokenization functionality. So we use that one. Then we have uh, torch, of course, and then we have pad sequence, which is uh, for this third step right here, where we're gonna pad every batch so that they're of same sequence length. Uh, then we have the data loader, data set. Um, you should be familiar with these. And then from pill, import image, and that's just so that we can load the image. 
All right, so we're going to come back to this first point of building an actual vocabulary, but let's start with sort of the second point first. So that way we can sort of see the general pattern and uh, how we actually load the data. And then creating the vocabulary will just be a detail that we add on uh, later on in the video. So the first thing we can do is class uh, Flickr uh, dataset. Um, and uh, we're just going to inherit from dataset. And then we're going to first create our init function. And here we're going to send in uh, self, we're going to send in the uh, root directory. So the root directory of the images. And then we're going to send in the caption captions file. Then we're going to send in some transform if we have some. Let's set it to default none. And then some frequency uh, threshold. Uh, and let's set this to five. I mean, you can experiment with this, but let's set it to five. And then we're just going to do self root directory is equal to root directory. So this what this would be is um, just a Flickr 8K and then slash images for us. In this case, if you remember how the data was uh, set up in the, in the folder, uh, but we're going to get to that later. Then we're going to do self .data frame. We're going to do PD .read CSV. Remember the image and then the caption was separ separated by a comma, right? And that's what CSV stands for, comma separated value. Then we're gonna, just going to load that captions file and we're going to do self.transform equals uh, transform. Then uh, we're going to get the image and the caption columns. So we're going to do self.images is equal to self.dataframe of image because image was sort of the um, at like the title or the first row was image comma column and that's uh, how we reference in the in the panda data frame so then we're going to do self dot captions uh, we're going to do the same self dot data frame but we're now we're going to reference uh, reference the caption all right now we're going to initialize a vocabulary um, and build a vocabulary Although, you know, we haven't done this yet, but sort of we can understand um, that, you know, that's the general overview and then we're going to actually implement that later. But we're going to do self.vocab is equal to vocabulary of sort of the uh, the class, which we haven't Im implemented yet. But that's going to be uh, where we're going to send in some frequency threshold, uh, which we've already established. And then we're going to do self.vocab.build uh, vocabulary. And we're going to send in self.captions and then to list, right? So that will send in all the captions strings that we have. Um, all right. Then let's see. We're going to do, uh, we're going to define length so that we can sort of have the length of our data set. Uh, we're going to return length of self.data frame. And then now, so how the uh, the data loading process works in, Py in PyTorch is that we have a get item where we say how we would get a single example, right? So we get sent in some index, sort of representing the uh, the index, which is uh, in between, I mean, strictly less than the uh, length of the actual data set or uh, less or equal to, and then uh, we have this index and we're just going to um, uh, sort of tell PyTorch how to obtain a single sample, a single image with a corresponding caption. All right, then we're going to do the caption. It's just going to be self.captions of that index, right? So we, we're getting a single caption. Then we're going to get the image ID, which is self.images of that index. Then the actual image, we're going to do uh, image.open using the pill library. And then os.path.join, we're going to do self.root directory. And then we're going to do image ID like that. And then convert and then RGB. So that's how we load the image. Then we can do if self.transform is uh, not none, so that we actually have some transformation that we want to do on our images. 
uh, we can do image equals self dot transform of that image. All right, next, uh, we have the caption, but we can actually just send in some text. So we need to actually, you know, convert this into a numericalized um, version. So th the way that we do that is we're going to do numericalized caption is first going to be uh, sort of self dot vocabulary, which we haven't done yet, but you can understand the pattern here. We're going to do string to index. That's what STOI stands for. And then we're going to first ask the uh, sort of the index of the start token, right? Sort of saying to the model that that's our start of our sentence. Then we're going to do numericalized caption. We're going to do plus equals uh, self.vocab.numericalize the caption that we loaded, right? Sort of converting each, uh, each word to a, an index, which is in our vocabulary. Then we're going to do numericalized caption. We're going to do uh, dot append and we're going to do self dot vocab uh, string to index of the end token. And that's how we have the start token is SOS start of a sentence and then EOS uh, end of sentence. Then at the end, we're just going to return the image and then we're going to convert the numericalized caption to a tensor. So we're going to return the image and then we're going to turn towards that tensor of that numericalized caption. All right. So this is sort of the, the how we actually load the data. And you can see that we need to now build our vocabulary. And let's do that. So we're going to do, uh, oh, let's see. So right here, we're going to do class vocabulary. And we're going to create our init. And the first argument that we're going to send into our vocabulary, is going to be some frequency threshold. And the frequency threshold is sort of, um, you know, if, if, if a word is repeated a number of times in the vocabulary, let's say that it's only repeated once, then that word might not be very important for our data set since it's only, you know, once in all of the captions. So then that might, you know, lead us to ignore that that word. So what we're saying in the frequency threshold is if it's not repeated frequency threshold amount of times, we're going to, we're going to ignore it. Uh, and yeah, so this is going to make sense when we, it's going to make more sense later on, but sort of saying where, um, what's the threshold for when we actually include it in our vocabulary. Then we're going to do self dot index to string. And this is going to be a dictionary. And we're going to set some standard values here. So the standard values we're going to set are, uh, so remember, this is index to string. So the key will be a, a an index, zero. And then we're going to map it to some string. And zero will be our pad token. Uh, one, let's see, one will be our start of sentence. Uh, two will be our end of sentence. And then lastly, we have one more and we have the, um, the unknown, the unknown, uh, token. So, right. If, a, if a, if a word is not repeated over the threshold, then it's going to be mapped to this unknown token. Uh, and then next we're just going to do sort of the, the inverse of that, that the inverse will be string to index. So, uh, that we, shorten that with STOI, and then that's also going to be a, a dictionary. And as you expect, it's sort of going to be the opposite of what we just did, right? That's, that's sort of the inverse of the, the, uh, ethos, uh, dictionary. All right. So we're just going to do uh, start of sentence and we're going to map that to one. Let's see, end of sentence and then two. And then lastly, we're going to have the unknown and we're just going to map that to three. All right. Then we're going to set self dot uh, frequency threshold to just frequency threshold. And again, we can also do a length function, sort of, uh, you know, getting the length of our vocabulary. So we can just do return length of self dot 
index to string. All right, uh, and then we're gonna do, um, let's see. So we're gonna do uh, define tokenizer English of text. And uh, this is just gonna be, so this is actually gonna be a static method. Uh, so we don't need to initialize this self here. And uh, so we're gonna uh, sort of tokenize the sentence, uh, uh, the, sort of the uh, the string that we send in, some text, right, uh, representing the caption of the image. And uh, you can sort of view this as just separating by space, although we're gonna use the spacey tokenizer, which does some more advanced stuff. And I've, I've talked about that on, uh, on my torch text videos, if you wanna know a little bit more about that. But anyways, we're gonna return toke.text.lower, so we're gonna lowercase everything, for toke in spacey English dot tokenizer of the text that we sent in. All right, so sort of an example, uh, if, I, if I have like this, I love uh, peanuts, this is gonna be mapped to um, sort of a list, and the first is gonna be I, next is gonna be love, or rather this first one will be lowercase, so it's gonna be uh, lowercase I, then it's gonna be love, and then it's gonna be peanuts, like that. So that's sort of what it's gonna do. Um, all right. So then we're gonna do define build vocabulary. We're gonna send in a sentence list, right? That's what we did, where did we do it? Uh, here, right? We sent sell the vocabulary, build vocabulary, we send in captions to list, right? We're getting a list of all the captions uh, in this sentence list right here. We're gonna start with frequencies. It's gonna be a empty dictionary. So we're gonna count, we're gonna go through each caption, we're gonna count how many times is a specific word repeated, and then we're gonna check if it's uh, over the threshold, we're gonna include it, if it's not, we're gonna ignore it. Let's see, vocabulary, like that. And then we're gonna do index, we're gonna start index four, and we're gonna start with that because we have already included these three, so the index is gonna start at four. So we're gonna do four sentence in sentence list. Then we're gonna do four word in uh, uh, self.tokenizer English of sentence, right? Then we're gonna just do if word uh, not in frequencies. Uh, and there are more advanced, I mean, there are I guess better ways of doing this, but this is a very simple way of doing it. If the word is not in our in our frequencies, we're just gonna frequencies of word, we're gonna set that to one. And if it is in our frequencies, we're gonna do frequencies of word, and then we're just gonna plus equals one. And then we're gonna do, um, we're gonna check if frequencies of that word ever reaches self.frequency threshold, right? If it reaches the threshold that we want, we're just gonna do self.string to index of word is gonna be equal index, index starting at four. And then we're gonna do self.index to string of that index, we're gonna set it equal to word so that those are still the inverses of each other. Then we're gonna index plus equals one because now we have four words in our vocabulary and we're uh, the next one we're going to add is going to be the fifth one right the last function we're going to add here is a define numeric numericalize so what this is going to do is uh what we talked about before uh, which is it's going to take some text and it's going to convert those into some um uh, into some um, numerical values uh, so the first thing we're going to do is tokenized text, we're going to do self.tokenizer English of some text. Then we're going to return, uh, let's see, we're going to do return self.shrink uh, to index of token. Um, and then if token in self.shrink to index, um, let me write this and I'm going to explain more in detail what it does. But if token in self.shrink to index, um, if else we're gonna self.shrink index of some uh, unknown token, 
sort of the value representing the unknown. And then for token in tokenized text. Right, so we have some text we want to numericalize. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna call the tokenizer uh, function that we created so that we get the tokenized text. Then we're gonna do, um, if the token is in our string to index, right? That means that it's included in the, uh, or rather, it, surpa it surpassed the frequency threshold. Then we're just gonna do self.string to index of that token because we know it's gonna have an index. If it doesn't, uh, if it's not over that threshold, then we're uh, then it wouldn't be in the self.string to index. So we're just gonna uh, return the index of the unknown token. And we're gonna do that for each token in our tokenized text. All right, so that should be it for our vocabulary. Um, now, this is a little bit, little bit more advanced, but essentially uh, right here, we have a, uh, this is for obtaining a single example, right? We're just obtaining a single index. Our data loader is gonna, is gonna call that for the number of uh, examples we want to have in our batch. Now, one thing that's very important uh, when we're using sequence models is that the sequence length are all the same for the examples in the batch. But that's not gonna be the case, you know, right now, right? Because the caption length might be different for different examples. Some uh, explanations of what's in the image might be very short, some might be very long. But in our batch, all of them have to be the same length. All right, so you can sort of have two ways of doing this. You can sort of check what is the maximum length of the of the longest sentence, and then every example you could pad to be of that length, right? That would definitely be a solution, although we might pad unnecessarily. Let's say that all of our examples are sort of length 10, and then we have one that's, I don't know, length 1 million. Then we would pad everything to be 1 million in length. Obviously, that's a you know, unnecessary compute. So I'm gonna show you how to, how to pad so that we have for, um, we check what is the longest length um, that's in our batch and then pad everything to that specific length. For that, we're gonna define um, class my uh, call it and we're gonna first just to define in it and so this class right here is gonna be sent into the data loader. I'm gonna show you why we do that. And then we do self, and then we do pad index. All right, so we're just gonna do self the pad index equals pad index. Then we're gonna do define call self, and we're gonna get some batch. All right, so we get some list of the, of the, uh, of sort of, let's see, we get a list of lists of all of the examples, right? And the list, um, so that was a bad explanation, let's see. We have, a bat, we have a batch right here, which is a list of all the examples that we want to have. And for each example, we are, we get this image and we get this numericalized caption. So we're gonna do uh, images is gonna be item uh, zero, right, since, uh, that's the first that's returned. And then we're just gonna do for item in in batch. And we're also gonna do one more thing, which is uh, dot unsqueeze uh, zero. We need an, an extra dimension so that we have um, for, for the batch. And then we're gonna do images is gonna be torch.catnate images and then dimension equals zero. So we're concatenating all the images across the dimension zero, which we just um, unsqueezed right here. And uh, why we can do this is because all the images are gonna be the same size. Uh, that's, uh, we take that for granted. And if it's not, then of course you would do some transformation here to make sure that they're all resized to be the same shape. Uh, and then the targets are really gonna be the captions, right? So we're gonna do item one for item in the batch. And then we're gonna use that pad sequence that I, sh I imported at the beginning. So we're gonna do targets equals pad sequence of targets. And then we're gonna do um, batch first equals false uh, because uh, we're not gonna, you can sort of determine this 
depending on your use case, but sometimes you want to have the batch as the first dimension and sometimes you don't. Normally you don't want, uh, normally you don't have that. Uh, so we're just gonna set it to false. Then we're gonna do padding value is equal to self.pad index. Right, that's the, we did in the init. Lastly, we're just gonna return images and then the targets and where the targets have all been padded using this uh, very nice function pad sequence. All right, the last thing we want to actually do is uh, define some um, get loader, right? Because at the end, we want to have some data loader, which is doing all this for us, which we can then just send send into our model. So we're just gonna do, uh, so we're gonna send in the root folder. We're gonna send in annotation or, yeah, let's call it annotation file. Um, we called it caption file before, but same thing. Then we're gonna have transform. We're gonna have batch size. Let's set it to a default of 32. We're gonna have num workers. Let's set it to default eight. We're gonna have shuffle. Let's set it to default true. Although if you're working with something like time series uh, data, you would not want to do this. Uh, but you know, this is an argument you can send in. And then pin memory equals true. All right, so we're gonna initialize our data set, which is gonna just be Flickr data set of that root folder, that annotation file, and then transform equal transform. The pad index is gonna be just data set dot vocab dot string to index of uh, pad. And then we're gonna do loader is gonna be data loader and we're gonna do data set equals data set. Man, these are really annoying. All right, anyways, uh, batch size equals uh, batch size. Then we're gonna do num workers equals num workers. Uh, shuffle equals shuffle. And then uh, pin memory equals pin memory. And then this is where we call the collate a class right here, so that we pad so that all of our same length. Uh, call it fn is equal to my call it, and then we're just gonna do pad index equals pad index. All right, and yeah, so I think that's it. Let's see, oh, we need to do this right here. And let's see, is there anything else? So we're just gonna return, I don't know, the, uh, yeah, let's return the loader. And then we can do um, data loader equals the get loader of, and let's see, we have, uh, what was it called? Flickr 8K images, that I think. Um, this might be wrong, but I think that was the case. And then annotation file was Flickr 8K and I think it was called captions.txt. And we can just do, and here we actually need to define our transform. So let's do that first. Um, transform is gonna be transforms.compose. And I hope I imported this because we need to make sure everything is of the same size, but I guess that's not important. But yeah, if you would actually use this for training, you would use some transforms here where you would use um, you know, transform that resize so that everything is the same shape, uh, normalize all of that. But since we're not gonna send it into a, mo uh, a model, I guess we can just use, um, uh, you know, none for this one. So we can do none like that. And then we can do for index, comma, image, images, comma, captions, in enumerate of data loader. And then we can do print images.shape, print, captions.shape. And uh, yeah, let's pray that this works. Uh, we wrote a lot of code, so let's uh, run this and let's see what happens. All right, we can't do that. So we gotta do, yeah, because we have a keyword argument. So let's do transform equal none. And then let's run that. Right, uh, so we did sell, change that. That was on line 62. So we're just gonna do 
place that to self and then let's rerun uh spacey english is not defined didn't we define that all right all right so sorry about that we actually need to also define that so we need to do spacey english is equal to spacey dot load of en so that we actually have you know the tokenizer needs to know what it's working with so that we have some in so that we have the english uh english words and uh if you don't have this you would just do uh so you can download this with let's see python m spacey download en so that's you would just download that and then let's rerun this now uh man how many mistakes did i do in this video so we have frequencies right there and we have this so we're going to do frequencies and oh, let's hope that was the last one Whoa. Yeah, so I think this is, uh, this might be because uh, we need to have some main function and because um, we're using number of workers. So then we're just gonna do uh, if name equals uh, main, we're gonna call the main function. Let's see what happens now. And yeah, so uh, I was wrong. We actually need to do the transforms because we need to actually convert it to a tensor. Uh, that's the only way we can do unsqueeze. So let's see, we can um, import that as well. We can do from torch vision dot, or rather import torch vision dot transforms as transforms and then we need to define those in our main function right here that and then we can do transforms and we gotta do transforms dot compose so that we can have several of these uh, and then we can do transforms dot uh, resize I don't know let's do 224 to 24 and then let's just do transforms dot to tensor. Um, and then we got to send in that at the end here. So we got to do transforms and let's see, we can do that. All right, and then uh, hopefully we can now rerun this. Uh, transforms referenced. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we can't do that. So transform. Because we're importing the same name. So. All right. So now it actually seems to work. So, um, yeah. So the first thing that's printed is the sort of the image. Um, let's see the the batch of the images. So we have RGB to 24 to 24 pixels. We have 32 examples in the batch, and then we have 32 examples where each example has been converted, um, you know, to these numerical values, and all of them are of length 26 because the maximum length of that batch sequence length was 26. So everything has been padded. Everything has been converted to numerical values. And uh, this can then be sent into some LSTM model. Um, and I'm going to actually, you know, do a follow up video on this and how you actually would do image captioning. We're going to use the, this exact, uh, you know, this exact thing that we've just implemented with the vocabulary, with the Flickr data set and all of that. Um, so if you want to see some practical examples of how to use this, uh, we're going to do it uh, and I'm going to do it in the next video that I do. So uh, hopefully this video was useful to understand how we load, you know, uh, in this case, caption data set with images and corresponding text captions. But I think that you can see that you can implement this same structure using some other text data set. Um, and hopefully this video, it was a bit more advanced than my other videos, but I tried to sort of uh, explain everything step by step. 
But of course, there are probably things that I didn't cover that well. So if you have any questions, then leave them in a the comment and I'll uh, do my best to explain the things that uh, I didn't do so well in this video. But with that said, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, like the video if you thought it was good. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video.